describe your current religious beliefs and practices? Uh, I do not belong to any church, and I don't belong to any organized religion at the, the current time, and haven't since I probably the last 30 years. Um, I'm not sure I believe in organized religion. I think organized religion has caused a lot of problems in this country and a lot of problems in the world in general. I, I, I just don't feel that I need to go to church to pray to some God that I'm not even sure is there. Um, I more believe in just, you know, being good to other people. I, I just, I, like I said, I, do, I don't firmly believe in organized religion at all. And, and I think, especially with things that happened like 9-11 and the jihads and all, it's like organized religion. I mean, people are killing each other because of organized religion. I mean, look at go, going all the way back to the Crusades. People killed themselves because of organized religion. So I guess I just don't truly believe that I need organized religion to go on in life. I mean, I know some people feel like they need it, but I don't need organized religion in my life. And I'm not sure I, I don't believe in it. Have these always been your beliefs? Um, well, not necessarily. I was raised in a good, strong Catholic family. Mom and dad were both Catholic, hence they, uh, and they firmly believed in the Catholic faith. Like, they did not believe in birth control because the church said you couldn't use birth control. Hence, I have ten brothers and one sister because they didn't use birth control. Um, so my, and my parents were, like I said, strong Irish Catholics. We all went to Catholic school from kindergarten through 12th grade and we didn't have a lot of money growing up. And so for them, it was a huge sacrifice for them to send us to Catholic school. But my mother firmly believed that Catholic schools taught kids values and public schools didn't do that. Like, you know, like if you went to public school, you were going to be a heathen. Um, she was a little, I don't want to use the word psychotic. Um, she's part of the reason I think that I don't believe in organized religion because she felt like, well, to be a good Catholic, you had to go to church every Sunday. And I mean, and we had to go to church every Sunday, no matter what, either on Saturday night mass or Sunday morning, or there was a five o'clock mass on Sunday. And so anyone who hadn't gone over the weekend, my dad took you to the five o'clock mass on Sunday. So he got all the stragglers who didn't happen to go Saturday night or Sunday morning because they were working or something because all 12 of us went to Mass. Even like Christmas morning, we'd get up Christmas morning and even though Stan had come, we had to walk by the presents and see all the presents and get in the car and go to church because Christmas was about Christ's birth, not about the presents. So we had to sit through Mass for an hour and then we got to go home. And my brothers were altar boys growing up. Um, even like to the point like when we went away on vacation for two weeks to the shore in the summer, they would altar boy at the church down the shore even. <laughs> like she, my mom, just was very, very strong beliefs in the church and th in raising, you know, and like I said, she felt like if you went to public school, you were not going to be a good person at all. Like those kids who went to public school were just, oh, those were all the bad kids. And only the good kids went to Catholic schools. So I did Catholic school, kindergarten through eighth grade was a, just a co-ed grammar school. And then I went to an all-girls high school, which I liked the all-girls high school experience. Not necessarily that it was Catholic. I just think it was a great experience being at an all-girls high school. Because, you know, with boys and all that crap, I mean, I actually could focus on school. And I did really well and ended up going on to a really good college and stuff. Um, so I liked the all-girl experience. I don't think it has to necessarily be Catholic. Um, I mean, it means I had to take religion class, but that wasn't so bad. And there were, at that point, there wasn't a lot of nuns in the school. So it was really just going to a Catholic school with a bunch of teachers and the one, you know, the three or four nuns in the whole school taught religion and that was about it. Um, so, I mean, did I believe in it? I guess growing up, I thought I did. And I thought that the Catholic faith was good. I got married in the Catholic church and I ended up baptizing just my first child. No, my first, no, all three of my children were baptized in the Catholic Church, now that I think about it. Um, but, you know, I think as I got older, I, I, I pulled away from the Catholic Church because I think it was stuffed down my throat too. I mean, my mother was just so adamant about it. Um, going off of that, who would you say if anyone has had a big religious impact on your life? 
two people. My mother, obviously, um, growing up, like I said, she was very strong impact on the Catholic, you know, with her whole Catholic church. And, and then even once our kids were, go we were gone as kids, she started going to church every morning when she didn't have kids, she would walk to church every morning and stuff. But then even she had a loss of faith when my father got sick and she felt that, you know, they, they didn't get a retirement together and she felt like, you know, it was awful that my father, um, she ended up taking care of him. He was, he was caught, canatotic is the word. He basically stared into space for 15 years in a nursing home. And so she really kind of lost her faith then because she felt like that God wasn't, you know, I mean, she had been such a good person and she had raised her kids so well and she did everything right. And so then how come she got, you know, why did God do this to her? And she felt like it was, you know, God doing something to her. But then eventually she did actually go back to the Catholic Church and started attending every day. But for like a year, a couple of, right when he first went in the nursing home, she stopped going for like a year and a half, two years almost, which everybody was like in shock in our family. But then she found her faith again, she said, and she started going again. So I think her, I think the other person is a, is a gentleman that I worked with for many years at a company in Buffalo here. And, and he and I would have a lot of discussions about religion because he kind of feels somewhat like I do that he's not sure is there really a God and, um, you know, do we need organized religion? So he and I had a lot of lively discussions over. I've known him now. Oh, gosh, it's been 12 years. So for 12 years, every time we go to lunch, we end up having a discussion about religion. And um, they've been some good discussions because he's had the same sort of thing. He has a, a wife who's sick. And so he's kind of like, is there really a God? And, you know, why, if there's a God, I mean, like I said, we've had discussions. If there was God, why would there be babies born with deformities? And if there was a God, why would, you know, why would he have tornadoes that kill babies? And, you know, and, and earthquakes and, you know, and why would there be war? And, you know, so we've had a lot of lively discussions on is there really a God or is it just... You know, just a bunch of people living together and we, we, we have free will and we make our own choices on what we do. And it has nothing to do with some being up and I keep looking up because that's my Catholic upbringing. Heaven's up there somewhere. And that's where God is up in, in heaven. And uh, he and I have some, well, Nick, his name is, and he and I have some great discussions about is there really uh, a God? How did your beliefs and practices play a role in raising your children? I, like I said, I baptized all three of my children Catholic, but that was kind of more just, I was still being the good little daughter at the time. I was younger and my mother expected me to baptize my children Catholic. So we actually, you know, went home because we, I'm not from Buffalo. We grew up in New Jersey. So we went down in New Jersey and had the big christening for my son and all the family came and then. The next two was a little harder to travel with three kids. So the next two, we had the christenings up here in Buffalo. Um, but we never regularly attended church ever with the kids. Um, the kids didn't like it. I, in some ways, I feel like the kids felt a little lost at times. And there were times when they realized their friends, well, when they realized all their friends were having these first communions and got all this money, they all, they told me, I want to be Catholic. I want to have a first communion. And I'm like, Oh yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's not why you're Catholic to have your first communion and get all this money at the party. And, um, you know, I struggled with, you know, all these people who are supposedly good Catholics in Orchard Park because, you know, I raised my kids in Orchard Park. You know, they were good Catholics. They went to nativity every Sunday, but then they were jerks during the week. I mean, and I guess I felt like I raised my children I mean, and I know it's a Catholic thing, but, you know, do unto others as you do unto yourself. And I, I tried to raise my children, you know, treat other people the way you want to be treated. You be nice to, you know, you're always nice to people. You're accepting of people. I mean, I, I grew up with a father who was a racist, you know, so he was, quote, a good Catholic, but he was a racist. I mean, he was absolutely a racist. His father was a racist. And I tried to raise my children to be colorblind. I mean, my the first girl my son had a crush on in fifth grade was a black girl, a beautiful black girl. I, I can't remember her name, but she was beautiful. And I tried to raise them just to, you know, I, I did. I guess, like I said, this is my, I don't think you need organized religion. And I think people that go to church every Sunday seem to think because I go to church every Sunday, I'm good. And so I can, I can do whatever the hell I want during the week, but I go to church every Sunday. So it's okay. God, you know, God forgives me and, Whereas I feel like I just 
I, you need to be good all the time. It's not just, you can't just go to church and be good. And like I said, I tried to raise my children to be accepting of others, whether they're, you know, race, color, religion. I mean, one of my best friends is Jewish and, and, you know, I, my, I say my father was racist. He was also, would make a lot of really rude Jewish jokes about the Jewish people who lived together in a town where we lived. In my town growing up, it was like the Catholics lived in the South End and the Jews lived in the North End. And there was, you know, jokes about all the North End Jews. And, and it was awful. I mean, it was not, but, you know, but the good Catholic, you know, I'm a good Catholic because I go to church every Sunday and I bless myself. And so that's where I guess, they, I mean, obviously my parents deeply influenced me that way because I felt like just because you go to, you know, I, I don't need to go to church. So I didn't take my children to church. Um, I know there were people that thought I was wrong for that. I know there's people in town, you know, in Orchard Park who looked down upon me because they couldn't believe I didn't give my children any organized religion. But I think I have three great kids who are accepting of other people, who treat other people kindly. I mean, um, my kids are not, you know, I mean... I don't need a commandment to tell me do not steal. Obviously, you don't steal. Obviously, you don't kill other people. I mean, that's just your values. And I don't need 10 commandments to tell me that you don't cheat on your wife. And, you you know, I, I just, like I said, I mean, I, I just taught them to be good people and to treat other people kindly. I mean, my husband, my husband was raised Protestant, mostly Methodist, I think, but Presbyterian for a while there. And his parents had a very strong religion. They used to go to church every week. And they, his father actually served on the board. He was an elder in his church. And his mother was the church treasurer. And they were very involved in their church. And the, he kind of kind of went the same way as me. I mean, we just, we did not get up Sunday morning and go to Mass. I mean, we tried to do it for a couple of weeks. And then we both just realized we were being hypocrites. That we were going to go... And, and we, we, we started taking the kids, like, Christmas, like, when the kids got a little older. When they're babies, I just wouldn't even bother. Because what's the point of bringing a two-year-old baby in a church? And when they got a little older, we're like, okay, Christmas, we got to go to Christmas Mass. So we go to Christmas Mass and Easter Mass. But then we realized we were just being hypocrites to just take them those two things. And so we actually even stopped going to Mass. And I don't, I, I don't know if. I don't think I did wrong by my children. I mean, I think if they feel they need organized religion in their life, I think they will. My son just got married, and he married um, a woman whose family is, I don't know if they're strong Catholics, but they attend the Catholic Church, and they did get married in a Catholic Church, um, and they had a priest marry them, but I don't think she goes to church every week, and I'm not so sure, like... I don't feel like none of my kids have come to me and said, wow, mom, you gave me no religion. Why'd you do that? I mean, I think they did okay. I mean, they, they learned good, strong values. I mean, I still had good, strong values. I don't need organized religion to have good, strong values. Have you had any significant interactions with people from different religions? Well, as I said, one of my best friends is actually Jewish. Um, and she's, she's pretty religious I mean she definitely is there for all the holidays and stuff I mean she doesn't go crazy with the kosher um, but um, again I you know I, I don't think we you know her religion doesn't affect her life like like it's not like she pushes it on me and, and she knows that I actually have no religion but that's okay. I mean, and, and when her daughter was going to make her bats mitzvah, I mean, we talked about it all along and it was, you know, but it was, it's a big party. And we, and we, I mean, we went to it and we sat through the ceremony too. My children all went to, we were all invited. This was a good family friend and, um, the kids sat through the ceremony and I, you know, it was a little different and, and you know, some of it, I mean, obviously you can't understand a bunch of it's in Hebrew, um, so it's hard to understand, but you know, I mean, we had talked to them before. I mean, they were older. I mean, she was, what do you make your bots miss when you're 14? So we think, you know, we talked to the kids about what it was and how this was just a ceremony for that faith. And, uh, you know, it's never really been an, an issue that she's Jewish and I'm Catholic. It's just not an issue. We're just people. Thank you so much for your time.